Today I want to talk about writing in different voices in MuseScore and why that's useful to us in music notation. To understand why this is useful, we have to understand where we might use it. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of where we might write in two different voices and why that might be useful for us. So I have a document open in MuseScore. This is just a uh, piano part with a treble clef and a bass clef staff. And let's say you want to write a part that has uh, quarter notes on A. So we'll go into our note entry up here or uh, push N on your keyboard to get into note entry. It should default to quarter notes. So let's put quarter notes in this first bar. Okay, um, but you also want to have eighth notes on beats two and four of this measure on a different note. So you go up here and you select eighth note and you go to this uh, second beat and let's put it on D. It'll automatically try to fix this for you because you can't stack two notes of different lengths in one voice. So it's gonna say, hey, I think you messed up. I think you meant to do this. And it'll push that other quarter note into an eighth note. So you say, well, um, let's try and make it work with one voice. So I wanted eighth notes on this D part, but now I don't have those quarter notes. It shifted that quarter note to uh, the and of two and the and of four, so now it sounds kind of weird. Um, so you say, okay, well, let me go ahead and put um, just an extra A, so that I still have the A on beats two and four. But now you have two A's when you only wanted one a on beat two and one A on beat four. There's another way to fix that. Uh, if we go in here and um, uh, either push the plus sign or go add a tie, uh, then it'll tie those two notes. And it sounds like this. That's what we wanted. That was the end result that we wanted. We wanted quarter notes on A, and then eighth notes on that uh, D on beats two and four. But if you look at this, this looks kind of funny. It's over complicating itself. There is a simpler way to write this and that simpler way is using different voices uh, to achieve this result. So the reason why we need different voices in music notation one reason is you can't stack notes of different length value on top of each other. So when we try to place that eighth note D on top of that quarter note A, uh, that's kind of where all those problems started. So um, by using different voices, you can have notes of different length happening at the same time. So what using voices does is it allows us to write music in a measure that already has music as if that music wasn't already there. I'll say that again. Writing in different voices lets us write music in a measure that already has music as if that music wasn't there already. So um, let's try and recreate this first measure in the second measure, but use multiple voices this time. So let's go back into our note entry uh, by either clicking this button up here or N on your keyboard. We're gonna put in our quarter note A's first. Now, if you'll notice when you go into note entry that your cursor turns blue and you have this blue quarter note and um, that is actually voice one. Uh, note entry actually just defaults you to voice one when you go into note entry. The way that you get to the other voices is by going up here 
in the menu bar, and you'll see that there's voice two, voice three, voice four. So voice one, we already put in, in blue. If we stay in note entry, and then come up here and click this voice two button, now our cursor turns green. So remembering that using different voices lets us write music as if the existing music wasn't there. We have to remember that we want eighth notes on beats two and four. So we want a rest on beat one and a rest on beat three. Since we're pretending that these other notes aren't there at all, we have to go in and put rests on beat one to get our eighth notes on beat two, a rest on beat three to get our eighth notes on beat four. And then this is what we have. So the same thing that we kind of did in measure one, we now have in measure two. I'll play both of them so you can hear uh, that they're the same. So this one looks a little simpler because we still have just these constant quarter notes on the A. And then the only thing that looks a little funny here is these quarter rests happening at the same time as these quarter notes. And you'll get that um, whenever you use multiple voices because each voice is pretending that the other music isn't there. So if you need rests, there will have to be rests happening at the same time as other notes. But this looks a little bit simpler um, because we don't have these uh, tied eighth notes and untied eighth notes happening at the same time. Um, you can clearly see that these quarter notes are happening um, and then the eighth notes are happening on beats two and four. Uh, you can also see the different voices if you click into that measure that voice one is that blue notes and voice two is uh, the green. In MuseScore, you can have up to four different voices in a single staff. So you can have four voices in uh, the treble staff, four voices in the bass staff, but it's still voice one, two, three, four. You won't have eight voices overall. You just have the four voices. It's just that you can use each of the four voices in each staff. Let's take a look at using all four voices, what that would look like. So if we go to this next measure, um, I wanna show you, if we go into our note entry tool and we are in voice one, uh, voice two, and voice three, and voice four. Another reason why we have voices in music notation software is because it's commonly used in vocal pieces, in choir pieces. So for a four part um, vocal piece, you might have soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And um, you'll have all of the top line with stems up, the second voice stems down, third voice stems up, and fourth voice stems down. So it's easy to see uh, which voice is singing which part. It also saves space because instead of having a staff for each of these voices, you have two voices sharing a staff. Um, so it saves a little space and it tries to make it easy to read for the performers, for the director, for the accompanist, uh, things like that. But this was originally where uh, using different voices came from was for vocal music. So let's take, um, let's look at another example. So this one is a little interesting because it has three voices in one measure. Um, and 
it starts to look a little complicated because you have this quarter rest here, this um, half rest, quarter rest. Um, so it can start looking more complicated uh, if you start using uh, more and more voices in one staff. Uh, that's usually why you only see um, like two voices in one staff. But now we have all of this and it sounds like this. One way that voices helped us here was that we had um, notes of different value uh, stacked on top of each other. We had eighth notes and a whole note uh, in the same staff. We had 16th note and a quarter note in the same staff. We had these quarter notes on top of this whole note going through uh, the bar. So we didn't have to write any uh, strange ties um, to get that same effect. We just used different voices uh, to get the music that we wanted. So this example here is from a, uh, a Bach chorale. And you can see that we have the four different voices. Voice one stems up, voice two stems down, voice three stems up, voice four stems down in their different colors. Uh, blue voice one, green voice two, orange voice three, and magenta voice four. And this is what this part sounds like. So that's just a few bars of a Bach chorale uh, showing you that there are um, the different voices in use. And I hope this helped you um, understand what the uh, voices feature in MuseScore does. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below um, and I will try to answer them as best I can. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon who uh, help support the channel. Um, there will be a uh, download of this MuseScore file over on Patreon for my patrons. If you want to head over there and download it and play around with um, all these different examples that I included in here. And I will see you in the next video.